That's a very good question. Um, if there would be any movie I could remix in 3D, it would be Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Uh, no surprises there. That's a great question. So yeah, Star Wars, it's, it's obvious, but it has to be. Uh, I will betray my genre movie nerd roots here and say that the movie that I would love to see, not only remixed, but completely re-recorded, is Sergio Leone's classic Once Upon a Time in the West, which has an amazing score by Ennio Morricone that was recorded in mono and it's a compressed track and I would dearly love to see that entire score re-recorded in RO 11.1 at Abbey Road and then a whole new soundtrack mixed for that film. The reason that we're here today is to announce some exciting additions to the range of products from Datasat. Um, there is a new processor line called the LS10, the Luxury Series, uh, and there is also an exciting addition to the RS20, uh, which is their Reference Series product. Um, both of these products uh, are actually bringing to the market for the first time uh, a new sound format called Auro 3D, uh, and obviously we're all very excited about that. Datasat is a company that's 26 years old. It was set up by a man called Phil Emmel. It was heavily based in the satellite business for the, last, for the first 20 years of its life. And five years ago, Phil bought DTS Digital Cinema, the professional cinema uh, part from DTS Inc. And for the last five years, we've been promoting and uh, creating products for the commercial and professional cinema market. And in the last two years, we've moved into the high-end home audio market, specializing in home cinema, but also moving into two-channel as well. We offer uh, uh, two levels of products. We've got a, a reference series range, um, and we, the first product we introduced there was the RS20i high-end audio processor with room optimization. Then we introduced some pretty powerful and beefy amplifiers, the seven-channel amplifier, the RA7300, that's seven channels at 300 watts, and the RA2400, two channels at 400 watts. And at the moment, we're now in the middle of launching a luxury series, so it's a more modest price range, and we've launched that with a product called the LS10, and we're quite excited at the moment because we're launching, at the same time, Oro surround sound for both the RS20i and the LS10. The LS10 differs from the RS20i because it's aimed to be a, a slightly more price conscious product. We certainly didn't want to compromise on sound quality in any way, so there there is very little difference between the products. So really it came down to what features could be included and what had to go. Um, things that had to go are the Dirac room correction technology, that's reserved for RS20i now, that's not in the LS series. Um, and also the RS20 includes matrix routing, so really you can map uh, any input to any output channel and do crossovers and you know complicated stuff like that. Um, it's great, but yeah, you don't need that on every system, so it was a pretty easy choice to leave that out of the LS10 also uh, and allow us to hit a better price point. Um, on the other side, of course, the LS10 has a number of very interesting features of its own. Uh, the first one I'm sure people will be interested to know is it does have XLR output connectors, no more DB25. Um, it has eight HDMI inputs and two outputs. HDMI 1.4 for now, of course, because there is no HDMI 2.0 chipsets available. And then the final thing that we think will be very interesting is it actually has a USB input which can accept 192.24 files for high-res audio from a computer. I really think that that could be quite interesting also. So what we wanted to do with the LS10 is make these new immersive sound formats more accessible to a broader consumer base. So it still supports DTS Neo X, Dolby Pro Logic 2Z, and of course we're excited to add as an option the RO 3D format, but we wanted to bring it in at a price point that's more accessible to more people. So to that end, we've designed a box that has all of the features that you need for immersive playback, 
but we left out some of the flexibility and customization that the RS20i offers to people who are building very complex screening rooms. The LS10 is aimed still at the higher end of the market, of course, um, approximate price around £10,000. Um, so it's not a, an entry level product, um, but it does open up yeah, to a wider range. Um, it opens us up more to uh, ev everyday customers who would look to put this into their own system rather than perhaps a, a dedicated custom install solution, which really is what the RS20i is. Um, so we think it can be quite interesting for you know, living rooms and media rooms as well as very high-end dedicated cinemas. RO Technologies is a company that's been founded in 2010 as a result of an intellectual invention of our founder and CEO, Wilfried van Balen, uh, dated in 2005, when he had this concept of enhancing the current sound formats that were out there. And he was looking for a way to immerse the audience further to include the third sound coordinate. So Wilfried started off from a blank sheet using PCM as the most pure um, audio standard in, in digital sound. And from that white paper, he started building and using the 24-bit stream to actually found, find that there were four bits into that 24-bit stream that were consistently underused. In that four-bit stream, or the, the four bits, we have developed a mechanism, a methodology, that allows through mathematical uh, reproduction to involve um, the third sound coordinate, in fact. So, Oro is a really interesting technology in that they wanted to maintain absolute backwards compatibility to current release formats. So, it's a PCM packing technology in which they can pack multiple channels of uncompressed audio into single PCM bit streams. So, an Oro 11.1 digital cinema package is contained within the 5.1 soundtrack. So for the studios, that's great. It means it's a single inventory of DCPs. So an, a movie is mixed in Oro 11.1, encoded down to 5.1, and distributed. If the cinema has an Oro processor, then it's unpacked and played back in 11.1. If they don't, it just plays through in 5.1. And that same paradigm will apply to consumer formats. So without needing to alter the Blu-ray spec, without needing to alter the HDMI spec, we can now transmit 11.1 or even 13.1 Oro soundtracks over the same 7.1 bitstream that Blu-rays have included all, of all along. Um, the obvious question would become, how can you convince uh, the wife to add more speakers into the living room, so to speak? And the wife acceptance factor, as we would call it, is a very important factor and was in fact one of the key uh, decision criteria that we looked at when we were designing the minimum speaker layout. In fact, everyone in the home has the, the 5.1 uh, as a surround uh, playback system. Um, adding the four speakers at the height layer would just mean that we would be adding four speakers above the four corner speakers that would already be present. So from an acceptance or aesthetical point of view, it has a minimum impact on the physical layout of the living room. So the full Oro format is 13.1, which uses the 7.1 bed that we all know from Blu-ray today, and adds to that height channels that correspond to the left, center, right screen channels, the left and right surrounds, and then a center top channel directly overhead. But the format allows you to downmix 13.1 content into smaller channel arrays. So the minimum recommended array is a 9.1 format, which would be 5.1. And then you do need that height layer to really get the immersive effect, which would be just left, right, left surround, right surround. And I think you'll find that adding four bookshelf speakers that are wall mounted fairly high up at the corners of the room is not something out of reach for even an average high-end home theater. Well, there's a number of ways you can listen to Oro. You can sit in the cinema experience and get blown away, and it is quite an amazing experience. But what we're demonstrating at a number of the events that we're holding at the moment is the progression between mono, stereo, 5.1, and then adding the height layers. And I have to say, when you start to add the height layers, you sit back and you wonder, why was this never done before? 
it seems so, so natural. Why wasn't it done before? But doing that and then applying that to the actual movies, it is mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Um, if you look back over the history of film, you know, technology has always advanced to enable storytellers to do what they do, and that is to tell stories. So the advance from silent film to talkies to stereo to planar surround sound with 5.1 and 7.1, if you talk to mixers, you know, adding that additional height level just gives you an added degree of realism that just helps the filmmaker steer the audience emotionally towards where that story is going.